Welcome to this Archivematica screencast, where we'll be looking at new features, enhancements, and changes introduced in the 1.9 version of Archivematica. Archivematica 1.9.0 was released on March 6, 2019, with support for Ubuntu 16.04, Ubuntu 18.04, and CentOS 7, including Red Hat Package Manager. If you're curious about the features that are in this release or any release, you can go to wiki.archivematica.org slash release underscore notes to find notes on all of Archivematica's releases. The first new feature that we'll look at today is a new API endpoint, which was sponsored by the Museum of Modern Art. This endpoint allows users to move a package from one storage location to another, as long as the two storage locations have the same purpose. For example, you can move a package that is in Ape storage to another Ape storage location, but you can't move a package from an Ape storage location to a transfer source storage location. If we switch over to the archival storage tab in our Archivematica instance, we can see that we have this move test package here. This is the one we'll be working with today. All we need is the UUID of this package, 8654, yada, yada, yada. So we'll just make a note of that and we'll use it later to construct our API request. If we switch over to the storage service, we can look at the locations tab and see that we have two different storage locations with the ape storage purpose here on the sidebar. The first one is our standard Archivematica storage. This is the storage location that was created when we generated this pipeline. It's just the basic default storage location for Archivematica. If we click on it, we can see if we scroll down to the bottom that there are several packages stored here, including, it's a little hard to see, but including our move test package, uh, which is located in that default storage location. The other storage location is one that I've just created. It's called secondary storage. And if we click on the secondary storage location, we can see that there are no packages currently in this space. So what I'd like to do is move the move test package from the standard storage to this secondary storage location that we've created. All I need to do is grab the UUID of this space, which you can grab from the locations tab. You can find the space and the UUID is listed here. Um, I'll use this also in my uh, API request to, um, to indicate to Archivematica which storage location I would like to send the package to. So now from the terminal, I can log into my site. Then I can run a curl command created using those UUIDs that we just noted. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the curl command here. Of course, there are lots of other ways that you might choose to write a command for this um, API endpoint. Curl is just the option that I've used. So a couple things to note in this, the curl command. We have the location UUID here. This is the location ID for our secondary storage location that we just looked at. We have our authorization and then at the end here, we have the, the request to the endpoint. So the endpoint is the move endpoint. Um, at the very end, you can see the word move. And the UUID after API slash v2 slash file is the UUID for the package that we just wanted to uh, move to that location. So there's not a lot of output here to say that this move was successful. Um, no news is good news. If we try to run the exact same command again, we will get an error message saying that the location must be different from the current location. Um, so we know that our package is now in that secondary location. So what this is saying is, hey, that package A654 is already in the second storage, secondary storage location. Now, if we look back in the storage service, we can go back to that secondary storage location. And when we scroll down, we can see that our move test package is now stored in that location. The next feature we're going to look at is also something that is available in the storage service, and it's the ability to delete stored dips. This feature was sponsored by Simon Fraser University. 
Previously, if you wanted to delete a stored dip, you had to make an API request or clear out the database. You had to do something in the backend that was is, is largely unaccessible to um, front-end users. Now you can delete a stored dip by going into the storage service, into the packages tab, and finding a dip. There is a dip here that's already been deleted, um, but there is usually a little delete button here. It says delete, you click on it, you confirm that you want to delete this package and it is deleted. So certainly much more accessible than it was before. Another big improvement to Archivematica 1.9 has been increasing the internationalization of the platform. Making Archivematica a translatable project has taken a lot of work over several releases, thanks to the support of the Canadian Council of Archives. In previous versions, the documentation, the Archivematica website, and much of the Archivematica interface have been made translatable, but this didn't include the text that describes the jobs that are executed as part of a microservice. So if we open one of these microservices, you can see all of this text um, that describes the various jobs in the microservice, that was not translatable before. And of course, that's a major part of the Archivematica interface. The text descriptions used to be held in the application database, which made it difficult to maintain multilingual support. In 1.9, these text descriptions have been moved out of the database and into JSON files, which makes it much easier to add new translations and to maintain them over time. If we want to switch languages, we can go to the administration tab in the user interface, click on languages in the sidebar, and select a language to translate to. You can see now that not only are the strings in the user interface um, translatable, but also all the strings in the microservices as well. The completeness of multilingual support for any given language in Archivematica depends on the work of volunteer translators to whom we are incredibly grateful. As of May 2019, Artifactual is in the process of moving to a new translation platform, so new translations are not currently being accepted. Once the new translation platform is ready to go, we'll post about it on the Archivematica Google group and hopefully we can get some of these languages to 100% coverage. The final change that we'll look at today relates to um, file identification. Previously, users would be prompted when they re reached this identify file format microservice, they would be prompted uh, to choose a tool to do file identification. Um, they could use Siegfried or Fido. Uh, there's also a file extension script, which looks at file extensions, or they could choose not to identify file formats. In order to bring file identification in line with the other preservation planning tools, users can now enable their chosen command on the preservation planning tab instead of in the, um, in the, uh, the workflow here on the uh, transfer page. So if we go into the preservation planning tab, under identification in the sidebar, we can click on commands. We can see the same commands that we had before, file extension, Fido, and Siegfried. You can see that Siegfried is currently the only tool that is enabled for file identification. If we wanted to identify, uh, enable Fido instead for file identification, you could click on enable, confirm that, go back to the commands, and we can see that now Fido is the enabled command. What this means is that it, as we're running a transfer through Archivematica, when we come to that identify file format decision point, we'll simply be prompted with a yes or no. Do we want to identify files or do we want to not run file identification? Choosing yes will prompt, in this case, Fido to run. This also resolves an issue where file identification commands would actually break if a user tried to edit them. So it has sort of a dual purpose here, fixing a bug and also bringing file ID in line with the other um, preservation planning tools. So as always, this release included a long list of bug fixes and small changes, as well as these sort of major features. If you go to wiki.archivematica.org, there's a link to the release notes on the front page of the wiki, and you can see information about all of our releases, 
Clicking into any one of them will show you information about supported environments, things that we've added or changed, and also a list of bug fixes. You can see the full list of changes for any release um, by going to this site. If you're curious about future releases, it's uh, we track all of our releases in GitHub. From this 1.9 page, there is a link to the 1.9 milestone in GitHub. If we click on it, you can see all 60 of the issues that we addressed in this release. So from github.com slash archivematica, you can go to the issues repository, clicking on the issues tab here, and then clicking on milestones will show you any upcoming milestones. So if you're curious about what we're working on next for Archivematica, uh, you can always come here and take a peek. Clicking on 1.10 shows you what we're working on for the next release of Archivematica coming up soon. Thanks so much for watching. For more information about Archivematica, you can always head to archivematica.org for documentation, news, and information about what the Archivematica community is up to.